okay guys um welcome back to yet another video on vector algebra okay so in this video we are going to be looking at um, how we can get the sum of vectors also called the resultant of vectors but we are going to be using what they call the unit vector approach okay because we have different ways to get the sum of vectors you can use a unit vector you can use a, a parallelogram law okay um you can also use based on what you have the triangle of vectors these things can also can all work okay and you also have Lamis theorem and a whole lot of methods you can actually use to find them um, the resultant of um, two or more vectors so however in this video we are going to be looking at how we can use the unit vector approach for that so let's start so let's say when you say the unit vector approach assume that you have vectors expressed in this form okay um, vector a is given as um, for i plus that you have vector b you have vector c this is vector c okay so you have these three vectors and then you want to find this is vector c sorry about that guys so this is vector c and then you want to find um, the sum of these two vectors a and b now when you sum two vectors that's also what you call the resultant so automatically i'm trying to look for the resultant of a and b here so the question is how do you find the resultant of a and b so what we are going to do here is this we are going to use whenever you're trying to look for resultant all you need to do is to add um, them component wise okay sorry guys i'm going to try to write all of this or draw all of this this solution to this so we have to write them component wise so what i mean by that is this we have vector a and we want to add vector a to vector b so we are saying for us to add vector a to vector b we need to add them component wise so we have the first one to be 4i okay we have plus j and then we have plus 4k this is the first one we have here and then next to that we have um, for b we have 7i we have minus 4j and then we have plus 2k so we have these two vectors and then we are trying to sum them so this is the first vector and this is the second vector for me to here gives us the second vector while for me to here give us the first vector now for you to sum all you need to do is to add them component by component <coughs> shit so you need to add them component by component that means this is the first component you add it to the first one the second component you add it to this one and then the third component you add it to this one by adding them component by component so if we do that when you add the first two components your result is going to be 4 plus 7 that's going to give us 11 so we have 11 i so we have 11 i when you add the first um, terms and then when it comes to that of j this is 1 j okay minus 4 j so 1 minus 4 will give us minus 3 j okay and then we have for k this is 4 k plus 2 k 4 k plus 2 k will give us our results as 6 k so that's it guys for the first question um we've gotten the sum of a and b so the resultant of a and b if we say it is equal to c or let's say we is equal to r so we have the resultant of a and b to be equal to 11i minus 3j plus 6k now for the second question they said we should find two times of a minus three times of c so it it means um just picture it that if you want to look for two times of a minus three times of c in terms of resultant you can say you're looking for um the resultant of this vector 2a and this other vector the uh, second vector you're looking at is minus 3c okay because when you're subtracting vectors as if you're adding one to the negative of the other so you're looking at the resultant of 2a and minus 3c that's basically what you're looking at so it still doesn't matter you can express it this way 2a minus 3c instead of 2a plus minus 3c 
which is the longer version of this so two times of a what we need to do is just to have we have two here we use to multiply a so this is 4i okay plus j that's what we have for a and then plus 4k right please you guys i hope you can pardon um this my writing material it is awkward then we have minus three times of c and for c what we have for c it's 5i so this is 5i then we have minus 3j minus 3j then we have plus 5k so this is uh, plus 5k right plus 5k yeah that's it so if we expand this expand two times so this that will give us 8i this is going to give us um this is just two times of j this is a j so two times of j will give us just two j then we have two times so this that will give us 8k right so this is 8k um so i think that part is tackled so we'll look at the next one three times so this three times of five is 15 so this becomes minus 15i then we have three times of this. Remember, we got this minus sign is going to be a plus now. So we have plus nine j, right? Plus nine j. Um, I pray I just get this part, man. I'm tired of drawing these things. Okay, then next we have minus three times of this. This is minus fifteen k. These guys, if um, if by any means you can help me look for a good um writing pad um okay a notepad or whatever please um try to um just describe it or possibly um recommend it for me the price and anything wherever i can get it so that i can go past this stage of drawing this using my touchpad is actually my touchpad i'm using which is not nice okay so please um i try to get one on wacom but it's not it wasn't looking nice i need something that has its own screen so if you have any recommendations please you have to help me out thank you so let's continue so based on what we have now we need to look at terms so this is 8i 8i minus 15i um i think 8 minus 15 will give us minus 7 right yes uh you know a little bit of math <laughs> okay so that will give us minus 7i then here we have 2j plus 9j that will give us 11j so here we have 11j and then we have 8k minus 15k and that's still uh, minus 7 so we have minus 7k so that is the answer for the second part of the question looking for 2a minus 3c so 2a minus 3c is giving us minus 7i plus 11j minus 7k so we are done with that part and next we look at this other one they said we should look for the magnitude of 3a plus 4b so basically what we're meant to do here is to first of all find 3a plus 4b after almost i've gotten that we now go ahead to look for the magnitude of whatever result we get okay so first let's see what um, 3a minus 4b will give to us so you have three times of a so this is for the third question right so we have three times of a minus four times plus four times of b that's what we have so i need to say this is three times of whatever a is and we have a to be four one and four so we have four i a is four i um plus j plus four k these are a then we have plus four times of b so this is four times of b and what we have for b uh, b we have is a um, seven minus four two so this is seven i right minus four j and plus two k and this is what we have here so we need to look for this first then look for the magnitude so if we look for this you sum these guys or you multiply this and this will give us a 12 this is 12 i you do for the next one this will give us plus 3 j okay you do for the next one that will give us another 12 so but now we have plus 12 k right so work on this also four times this will give us 28 
so we have 28i 4 times so this will give us minus 16 so we have minus 16j and then 4 times so this uh, will give us plus 8 so we have plus 8k so we've done um, the hard part so let's move down to the simple part now so the simple part is we just taking like them so we look at i and this is another i so 12i plus um, 20, 18i, 28i will give us 40 of i so this is 40i then this is 3j minus 16j that will give us minus 13j what? and this 12k plus that that will give us plus 20k so that's what we have for the sum of these two but it's not what we are asked they say we should find the magnitude so we say okay this implies that the magnitude of 3a plus 4b is going to be equal to what now according to what we did on magnitude um two videos back what we are simply meant to do is to look for the square roots pick each component and then you square it. so we pick 40 and we square 40 uh, we pick minus 13 and square minus 13 and then we also pick 20 and square 20 so this is what you call the magnitude of this vector so you go ahead to work on that if you square um, 40 um, you're going to get 1600 you square minus 13 you're going to get 169 the minus sign will always go whenever you're squaring an item you square 20 um, you're going to get 400 as the result and everything here when you work on it let's have a line here so when you work on that that's going to be the square root uh, 1600 plus 400 that's 2000 and uh, this 2165 so 2169 sorry so we are looking for the square root of 2169 so that is going to give you a value in decimal so whatever it gives you in decimal becomes your result okay so that's it guys for um, the first question we have here so in the next video we are going to be looking at um, another question and then we we'll see how we can solve that so I'll see you guys in the next video bye bye